In 2001, 16 years ago, I was working at a company called MainGate.com. And this was back in kind of the heyday of the first dot-com boom, when companies were starting up with all kinds of crazy ideas. This was like the Pets.com era. And MainGate.com was a company that wanted to be a military portal. So if your, your uh, spouse was deployed and you were at home, you could use this as a way to, to communicate with them or communicate with other military families. Anyway, not sure exactly what the point of the site was. I'd only been working there for a while, and it was clear with the way things were going that the company was not going to last for long at all. So I didn't, have any, I didn't have much work to do. Like, I spent a few days swapping out banner ads and doing kind of admin -y type stuff, even though I was hired as a programmer. Um... But after a while, there were lots of meetings going on that I wasn't involved in, and just n nobody had any time to assign any work. So I did what anyone would do, uh, which is I started playing, war uh, not World of Warcraft, but Warcraft 2 at work. And I would sit there, not trying to hide my screen or anything, there was just nothing to do. So I spent a few days playing that game, and it was fun. Uh, but I got bored of it. I've never been a huge video gamer, although occasionally I will get, you know, caught up in a game for a while. So I played it and uh, decided after a few days that I wanted something else to do. So I decided to, to hone my skills, my nascent web programming skills. And I built a website using what at the time was some pretty amazing stuff. The web, the, the software Macromedia Dreamweaver. And I knew how to use that software to make templates and to use those templates to make web pages and the hobby that I was into at the time was longboarding and I've been doing this for a few years I picked it up um, I guess uh, when I was a kid I started skateboarding and did that pretty much all growing up and then in college uh, I can't remember if I went to college with a longboard or I got there, anyway, I was in, I was in Virginia, in a beautiful part of Virginia, uh, in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where there were lots of long and not too steep, but winding hills, and my buddy, Steve Puente, got me into longboarding, he would come, practically drag me out of my apartment, and we would go, and then slowly, you know, the, the bug, I caught the bug, and, and started doing it pretty, pretty frequently, and pretty passionately, never, like, at a and I was like super high level of skill though. So that's what I was interested in when I was working at Maingate. So I decided to build this longboarding website and I wanted to have articles. Um, I wanted to have reviews of boards and that was really the initial, the initial idea. So I wrote a couple articles, I made this fancy template uh, using all HTML tables. I very clearly remember how complicated it was to get these each article formatted properly with with uh, this 3D looking box around it. And I, I launched the website. Um, at the time, the way you publicized a website was you, you would go to like yahoo.com and you would submit the website to their search engine. And there was another one, which I cannot remember the name. I can't believe I can't remember this because at the time it was such a big deal. But it was a human edited search engine where there were categories, everything was categorized, and you could get your site listed there. If you contacted the human editor of this website and asked them to, to review it and submit your site. So I did that. I put it in AltaVista. I probably submitted it to, to this other, you know, upcoming search engine called Google that yeah, it still hadn't taken over the world. Um, and started getting a few hits here and there. Um, I would spend time every, uh, at the time that I worked in Maingate, I would spend all day working on it. And then fr from then, uh, after Maingate imploded, not long after I started this website, I would spend time in the evenings going out and looking at longboarding websites. And then I would download pictures of every single longboard these companies sold, open them in Photoshop, cut out the background by hand so that they had the, the transparent background and upload them to the website manually using manual templates and Dreamweaver until I had like a pretty decent sized directory of all the skateboards that were available and I had a few articles. 
So this went on for a while. Um, one thing led to another. Eventually I switched off of the, the manual templates onto this content management system called, it was called Geek. Shoot. I can't believe I can't remember that either, but I think it was like Geek something or other. Anyway, uh, it was pretty powerful, like the Silverfish longboarding, which is what the, what the website came to be called ran on this for years. Um, and the, the name Silverfish Longboarding, I, I didn't even really know what a silverfish was at the time. I just thought it was like a cool sounding word. And of course the domain name was open. So that's what I called the website. Um, my, my, my reasoning there was not very deep, but uh, I liked the name and it, it dictated the color of the site. Everything was like kind of grays and blacks. So yeah, I, I, uh, I switched it over to this content management system that allowed people to comment on it. Um, eventually, I got a couple other people submitting articles. I started writing to, to longboarding companies, asking them to send me boards, and I would re write a review on them. Usually, that was the only way I got paid for the site, uh, was because I got to keep the longboards most of the time. Um, Eventually I found Google Ads, I put them on there. They never made a lot of money, but they started bringing in a little bit of money. And the site, oh, I added forums. There was a, a, a free forum software, which is still around, which is crazy, called PHP BB. And it was just like a bulletin board software written in PHP, extremely, I mean, at the time it was like really well designed and nice, but it was also very, uh, very frequently sus, uh, very frequently susceptible to hacking attacks, so you had to like patch, you do security patches constantly, and all this is running on like some tiny server that I was renting. Uh, I think it was at the time even, just like a VPN type server hosted uh, on shared hosting. Uh, for a while, I used Media Temple, which was like a really cool hosting service, and then it switched off to something else later on. And the site just kept growing. Like there was only one other competition and it was this website called NCDSA, which stands for Northern California Downhill Skateboarding Association. And that site started off as just a place for longboarders in, in Northern California to go visit and talk about and write about their events. And it was, had a much more uh, professional tone to it. Uh, Silverfish was always more just about like chewing the fat with a bunch of other longboarders, usually the younger crowd. Um, NCDSA had more serious gear reviews and was more like competition and contest oriented. Um, but over time, people from NCDSA started finding Silverfish and they would either post on both or they would switch over. And there was a little bit of friendly competition for a, a while there. So at this point, the site had been running for a few years um, I even had my dad helping out sometimes going and finding pictures of skateboards, um, and I, I can't remember if he ever did any of the Photoshop. I think it was more just like uploading them and, and, and putting the, the stats in there. And really, I think that was one of the most impressive things that Silverfish had was for a while, pretty much every longboarding company that was big enough to have a website was on Silverfish with images of every board that they made and people could go and write reviews on there. So it was like the de facto source if you were buying a long board to get semi-objective reviews on the board before you bought it. And, you know, if you're not a long boarder, uh, and not just the boards, uh, everything, wheels, trucks, bearings, everything that you could use, but pads, um, and not just downhill skateboards, but also like pool skateboards pool uh, writing boards, some short boards if they were made by longboarding companies. Uh, everything was on there. And uh, you, you could go read reviews, you could leave reviews on it, and it, it, it was a good source for that. And then the forums became the next thing that took off. There were, uh, at any given time, you know, a, a few hundred very active users and several thousand occasional users. Um, and I brought in a couple other guys to help out with it. The, it became too much to moderate the forums and there were too many articles to write. So I brought on uh, a guy called Eric Basil who was an attorney in California and 
a guy called Malachi Kingston, Kingston, who had been active in the forums, and they eventually, through a series of events that are not exactly, I don't think any of the three of our best moments uh, took over the website um, via what ended up being me selling it to them. And, you know, uh, uh, even though it didn't end, you know, I didn't back out of it that well or, 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 you know, I didn't make like any money off of it or am I, am I leaving the site was not under maybe the best circumstances. It was probably a good thing. It, it, I ran the site for about six years doing most of the work. Um, actually in the last two of those years, they, they probably did at least as much work as I did, if not more, um, and so they, they rightfully felt that they had like some ownership in the site based on the amount of work that they put in there. And eventually we settled on something, they bought it, and they were the ones who ran the site for the, the next 10 years. And, uh, you know, kudos to them because that was not an easy job to do, like moderating a bunch of uh, long borders who, as you can imagine, are like pretty chill people overall, but not always like... I don't know, the longboarding crowd tends to draw, if you've ever seen the movie Dog, uh, Z, Dog, shoot, Z Boys and Dogtown, Dogtown and Z Boys, I can't even remember the name, anyway, uh, about Jay Adams and those guys, you know, some of them ended up in prison, and, uh, I think that spirit of rebellion carries through longboarders even to today, which is, definitely not like a knock on longboarding culture. I think it's still pretty awesome. It's pretty chill and pretty fun. Um, but, and with regard to the forums, like keeping all these people from going at each other's throats, uh, it's, it's like a, it could be a full-time job sometimes and they become your friends. So you, you end up separating, uh, two friends from arguing with each other or, you know, calming down these big disputes between companies and, and skaters and all, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, these guys could tell better stories about that because they ran that part of the site for much longer than I did. So for 16 years, uh, Silverfish Longboarding existed. Most of that time, it was the biggest longboarding website online for quite a bit of the time at the end. After NCDSA shut down, it was really the only independent longboard review and forum online and uh, something that I guess I feel pretty proud of even though I haven't had involvement with it for over 10 years. It was a, a cool project that started on a whim. I had no financial motivation when I did it which is probably why it succeeded uh, and it, it ran that way for a long time. It brought a lot of people together. There were events that were held uh, under the Swordfish Longboarding banner, again, by Malachi and Eric. Kudos to them for that. And uh, companies were launched and ran their course through that time, longboarding companies. Um, there were li lifelong friendships made. Um, and I learned a lot. Would I ever start another community website again? Probably not. Uh... Uh, as they say, ain't nobody got time for that, but, uh, the lessons that I learned running it were valuable and, uh, no regrets. So today on, on the day when September 22nd, 2017, uh, the day that Silverfish Longboarding went offline, um, this is my little, you know, memoir to, to that stage of my life and to that piece, that small uh, piece of longboarding history. So if you have a skateboard, do what I just did, take it outside, cruise around on it a little bit, and think about the, the good times in the wild west of the internet uh, when, silver, when sites like Silverfish Longboarding could survive and thrive, and uh, hopefully we'll see more of that. You know, hopefully not everything will just be centered around Facebook and Twitter and these big social media billion dollar companies. You know, I'd love to see a smaller uh, independently run site by someone who's young and passionate pick up the, the torch where Silverfish left off. 
So if you watched this far, thanks for watching. And this has been Marcus Borwaller talking about an old side project.